Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 68 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, let's start the journey of our machine learning just by starting with linear regression. And I'm pretty sure most of you know what linear regression is, especially if you are coming from the research background, I'm pretty sure you have used this, whether it is in Excel or any other uh, software. So linear regression is fitting the data to a straight line. So linear regression is a linear model where this model assumes a linear relationship. So there must be a linear relationship, okay, between the input and the output. And always, always the inputs are denoted by X, okay? And the output is denoted by Y. Or X is the attributes or features. There are many ways you can think of this, but X is basically what goes into the machine learning model and Y is what we are predicting from this machine learning model, okay? And uh, th there, if there is a single input X, uh, the method is simple linear regression and X can be multiple. And just like we saw in our, for example, housing example from two uh, tutorials ago, the house prices, depend on what is the median income in that neighborhood, how many rooms are in the house, yeah, and a bunch of other attributes. So these are all various values of x. If there is only one x and y, one y, that's called simple linear regression, there are multiple input variables, then this is <coughs> multiple linear regression. And let me show you the simple theory behind linear regression. And I've already talked about this in the last tutorial, but uh, this can be a bit of a reinforcement to that. So you have a whole bunch of data points and you're trying to fit this to a straight line. And there can be many ways you can draw the straight line, but let's say you start with initial guess, okay? It always starts with initial guess, whether it is human or machine learning, right? I mean, you start with an initial guess. Here is the initial guess. You're like, okay, that's probably not very good. Another guess that's probably not very good. How do you know that this is not good? You have to quantify it, right? So the machine has to quantify some way. So let's say we put a line like this. Okay, is this good or a bad fit? Or should I keep moving this, uh, you know, to make sure I get a good fit? So how do you quantify that? So that is, if you just look at this data, right? I mean, this, this line, here is the data point, original data point, and here is what my line says that, okay, it's going to predict. If this is my linear uh, regression result, then you look at this difference between each of this original data point and the line that we are trying to fit, quantify it. How do we quantify this difference? Well, y2 minus y1, right? That's the dif distance between the line and the actual data point. In this case, it would be, uh, for example, a, uh, a positive number. In this case, this would be a negative number, negative, positive, positive, negative. But the error is the same amount. We have to look at the magnitude. That's why you look at this error and then you square it so that you're only looking at this magnitude, right? So the squared error, and then you add up all of these and average them, which is what we call mean squared error. So you square the difference between these two, which is our error. You sum of, uh, uh, you know, sum all of these error values, and then you take an average. If I have n data points, one over n, right? So this is mean squared error. Now the best fit will have the least mean squared error, right? So the best fit is the one where the distance here is a good compromise for all the data points. So that would be the mean, um, uh, you know, uh, the best fit. So this is called the loss function for the linear regression. There can be many different types of loss functions, but this is the most commonly used loss function for linear regression. So in this case, the goal for the algorithm is to minimize this mean squared error value, okay? And uh, uh, let's jump into spider IDE because coding this is as easy as understanding lean square, uh, at least, uh, you know, linear regression. So let's jump into our spider IDE. So here it is, I've already got open. And uh, this may look like a very large, uh, you know, uh, long file with a lot of code. Most of this is uh, text explaining you each and every aspect of this. Again, as usual, I'm going to share this, so please go ahead and look at uh, the GitHub link at the bottom of the description, but uh, please focus on uh, each of these lines at a time. So first of all, let's go ahead and import our standard libraries. Again, how do we handle data? We handle using pandas library. And then how do we manipulate data? 
well, within pandas, but powered by NumPy. Sumpy, sometimes we have to use NumPy by itself, so I'm going to Im import that. How do we visualize data using PyPlot? And maybe Seaborn gives better visualizations. Again, please watch the previous tutorials on the topic. Seaborn uh, also powered by PyPlot, but let's go ahead and import these libraries because we may need them. Next, let's import uh, the data. In this case, uh, there is some uh, synthetic data in cells.csv, you can create your own data here, but let us uh, uh, let me define what it is. So if I actually plot this data, uh, let's go ahead and actually open this so you can see, instead of plotting, on the uh, one column is time. Time is going from 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, all the way up to, again, you can have this in the time format, but just think of this as going from zero all the way to five, okay? And on the other column, I have something called cells. Think of this as number of cells. So as the time goes by, how are the cells dividing or multiplying? Yeah, so the number of cells are increasing here. So this is a very simple data set. If you wanna look at it, again, you know how to do it, plt.scatter or sns. Uh, you know, uh, line plots and so on. So let's go ahead and our x is time and our y is the uh, column called cells. So let's go ahead and plot it. And if you look at the plot, uh, oops, sorry, let's run the entire line. And here is the plot, okay? It kind of look linearish, but let's actually fit this to, uh, uh, you know, a, a line. So how do we do that? So first of all, let's define what our X is, because right now what we have is a data frame, a data frame of two columns. I need to define that my X is time, my Y is cells, okay? So how do we do that? Again from my data frame, I'm going to drop the column called cells. If we drop the column called cells, we'll be left with the column time. That's exactly what we are defining. My X data frame is the same data frame, uh, the initial data frame where I'm dropping cells. So now my X should only have one column called time. That's it. Y would be exactly the opposite. So my Y is uh, the data frame where uh, the column name is cells. So if you open up my Y data frame, you should see that, okay, this column name is cells. Now I have my X and Y, I can go ahead and fit it. But when it comes to machine learning, again, please refer to my previous video, we have to validate whatever the model we come up with. So for validation, where are you going to get new data from? If you have other data to validate this, that's fine, but in this case, I'm going to hold out 30% of my data for testing and only use 70% for training. So that's what this is. So within scikit-learn.model selection, you can import something called train test split, okay? Use that to split your data into training and testing. Okay, so here is how it is. Since this is the first time we are uh, looking at this, let me explain this a little bit uh, uh, further. So train test split is applied on to my X and Y. In this case, my X and Y are labeled X underscore DF and Y underscore DF, right? This is my X and Y. And then the test size is 0 0.3. That means randomly take 30% of this X and Y, okay, as my testing size and the remaining 70% is my training. And I'm putting a random state and you can give any number here. And a random state is, now if I run this code again, I get the same split. So I can compare the results if I want to. If you don't put random state, every time it uses a different random seed and you get different results. Nothing wrong with that, except if you want to keep track of how different, uh, for example, models are doing on your data, you may want to keep this split to be the same every time you run it, okay? That's what random state is. Okay, and what output do you get when you run this line? You get four things uh, as output. One, X train, meaning the training values for X and testing values for X meaning my X train will have 70% of the data and my X test will have 30% of the data. Same thing with my Y and Y test, okay? That's what this is. So let's go ahead and run these lines. And here you can see that my X actually has 51 data points, but then my X train has 35, which apparently is 70%. 
and 30 percent of 51 apparently is about 16 so 16 of this is held for testing okay so now that we have our data ready the next step is just applying linear regression applying a machine learning model is very very simple in python handling the data takes most of your time pre-processing the data takes most of your time because you need to be careful what goes into the algorithm and then if it is meaningful that goes in you'll get meaningful results if it's meaningless that goes in obviously you're going to get uh, junk as output okay so now how do we do linear regression linear regression is available in multiple libraries i'm going to show only scikit-learn right now from scikit-learn import linear model okay and the way you define a model, typically it's customary to define your model by a name called model, whether it is deep learning or regular machine learning or linear regression, I recommend sticking with the convention. So I'm going to assign a variable called model and which equals to linear model. Within that linear model, there are various functions available. I'm gonna apply linear regression and this line creates an object. Let's go ahead and run these two lines so I can show you what happens. So when you do that, if you look at model up here, it's a linear model dot base dot linear regression. This is nothing but a linear regression object. Okay, you cannot open it. You cannot see it. This is a linear regression object. And now we are fitting that object to the training data. Please don't be confused with this. If you want, you can actually do dot fit and then put your uh, x and y right here so everything comes into one line okay so you can do either way so first i'm creating a model and defining a model and then i'm fitting that model with the training data okay x train and y train so let's go ahead and run this model.fit so now we have a trained model that's it it's as simple the model is trained right away if it is deep learning it takes a few hours to train that model uh, obviously because you have a lot more data we are all set now let's go ahead and predict it how are we going to predict it well you can do model.predict okay and then predict on what predict on x underscore test remember we held out 30 percent of the data for testing so we are using that to predict so let's go ahead and run this line and now you should see prediction test is an array of float 64 and we have 16 values right there so in fact if i open this you can see all the outputs here now just by looking at the output you don't know if it's accurate or not you have to compare the output with what the actual values are remember when you do this x test you also have y test right the corresponding y values for that x so you can compare these two and then report the prediction so the way you do that is uh, go ahead and first of all let's go ahead and print the x test and y test okay there are many ways to compare these two but again I'm not sure if you can uh, get much out of this let me expand this so you can see uh, so x test for the first one I got a value of 302 and what it calculated is 298 that's not that bad for the next one 292 and 301 okay so I mean, you can visually look at that. For the last one, 221, it predicted 218. It's not bad. Now, you can compare individual numbers, but we have a better way of doing things when it comes to, for example, linear regression, which is you can print out the mean squared error between the test values and the predicted values. That's why we imported our NumPy library. Within NumPy, you have something called np.mean, and you can take your prediction test minus your y test and square it so i'm literally calculating the square and then the mean and printing it out okay there are many other ways we'll see that uh, later on as we work with other machine learning algorithms but uh, this is just a quick mean squared uh, error right there so let's go ahead and uh, print this and the mean squared error value seems to be 0 0.15 compared to these values like 300 and 270 0 0.15 of mean squared is not bad yeah. Uh, one other thing you can do is uh, uh, residual. Oh, by the way, I completely skipped over the most important part here, which is uh, there is something called model.score and score actually prints out the R squared value. I'm pretty sure, again, if you have done 
e linear regression, for example, even in Excel, you probably printed out this R squared value, which is obviously a measure of how well these observed values and the real values fit. So for that, your X is X train and uh, this is Y train. So you're supplying your X and Y values from the training data set and you're looking, or you can do testing data set, yeah? And uh, let's look at the score uh, right there. So 97.9, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's your uh, mean squared value. And finally, you can also plot residual values. Yeah, so let's go ahead and plot the residual. As the name suggests, you probably know what residual is. Already residual is uh, from our testing data. Uh, it's actually uh, taking these residuals, uh, prediction, whatever your prediction is, minus the actual values, right? Uh, uh, that is your residual. I'm just plotting it against zero. If both are equal, then you should get zero. Zero is great you have no residuals. It rarely happens. But you can see the residuals go from uh, positive 7 to negative or minus 7 to plus 7. Uh, and again, compared to something that has a magnitude of 270s to 300s, that is highly acceptable, I should say. And you can also print, plot it, you know, the prediction, because now we have, uh, in fact, you can actually print out the equation for this linear regression again in the next tutorial. Let's actually expand this into multiple uh, x values. But again, you can uh, print out the values for, uh, you know, uh, for your linear regression. So you can actually plot it if you want. Uh, but in this case, that's captured as part of the model. And from once the model is trained, you can extract all of these uh, if you want. So thank you very much again for watching this tutorial. In the next one, let's build on this and let's look at, okay, how does linear regression work if you have multiple X values or multiple inputs into your linear, which we call multilinear regression. So thanks again.